Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's get in the attitude of worship. We come here to do one thing. That's the worship. The King. Only one King and one Lord. Amen. I greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus this night. And I uh, know others are running very late, but we are on time. And Jesus is always on time. Amen. Amen. So, may I ask you this? I, I'm, I'm going to keep my promise tonight to Brother Ferguson for sure. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> just bear with me a little bit. Move it a little too small. You know, it just gets down and everything. Now, a question one. Is that all right? Can I ask a question? Good. How many of you have breath? Amen. Amen. I just see no hand go. I want to hear amen. Do you really have breath? Amen. You sure? Yes. All right. Let me read a little scripture for you. Is that okay? Amen. We can start to read the scripture, then we'll say. Then we'll jump. Then we'll shout. And then we'll be lifted up. <laughs> All right. You know how this time is okay. I want to read you two Psalms. Very long. Not Psalm 119, don't worry. It wouldn't be that. You know, there's a short psalm, there's a long psalm. But the shortest psalm is the best of psalm because it takes a short time to read it. Amen? Yeah. Ah, some of the nice people here tonight. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to read. Psalm, the last psalm in the Bible. I want to start there. Go we in the last days. Huh? Amen. Okay. All right, one more I said, praise the Lord already. <laughs> well, I'm going to do it now. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Praise God in his sanctuary. Amen. Praise him in the fulfillment of his power. Amen. Praise him for his mighty acts. Amen. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Amen. Praise him with a psaltery and a harp. Amen. Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Amen. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Amen. Oh, we have an organist here. Amen. This kind of adopted daughter, then she walked in today and I thought, who is this girl? Amen. Not knowing that she gets so big all of a sudden. <laughs> Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Amen. Ready, Kai, you ready? You, re you ready to make a joyful noise? Amen. Let's check it. <laughs> now, the last verse. Let everything Amen. that had breath Amen. praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You know, the Bible is so sweet. The songs of Zion are so rich. I'm going to read you another short one. That's two verses in this one. Behold. And behold. Oh, Psalm 134. Behold means to look. You remember? Amen. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. If you're not looking, you won't see it anyway. Behold, bless the Lord. You understand that? Yeah. Not ten lords. Bless the Lord. Amen. All ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. This has been converted. Amen. I thank God for Brother Patel. Well, I call him Brother Patel now, the manager. He's been so good to give us this place. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And we take it from a conference room and we make it a sanctuary tonight. Amen. So we come here to worship. Amen. All right. Lift up your hands. No, 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 no. Something wrong. I see two hands right up. Lift up your hands. Amen. 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 Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hands where? Anybody know? In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And bless the Lord. Amen. One Lord. Yes. One King. Yes. One Savior. Amen. Amen. And that's the only one that can save. There's no more. No more. All the other lords, they're gods and they're gone anyhow where they want to go. Now, the Lord that made heaven. 
Which one made the heaven? In the beginning, the Lord Jesus Christ made the heaven. You don't believe that? Brother Fogel, what am I talking about? I don't know what you're going to talk about anyway. The Lord that made heaven and earth, the one that we are standing on right now, bless thee out of Zion. Amen? Amen. All right. That just arrests me the scripture, like Billy Paul always said. Every Christian, they pray, they read the Bible every day, and that's all we do. Amen. So, anybody want to, to worship the Lord now? Amen. Oh, oh, where are my people are going? No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's all stand then. Oh, is it in that? No, that's not it. Oh, I got it over here. <clears throat> okay. okay, so, as you all know, I'm, I'm just their, their, the manager taking care of things. That's what I'm doing tonight. But I forgot to is a preacher. And we all are going to sing. Amen. Nobody's exempted. Amen? Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to sing, we're going to shout, we're going to praise the Lord. You want to lift your hand, you whatever you want to do. Amen? So we're going to start with a song that they call an old song. Amen? You know, those old songs, they have new meanings to us. So we're going to try to start with 146. These old songs, they, they mean so much to me. You know, I remember at nine years old, I was singing this song. And 14 years old, I came to the Lord. And 51 years, I came to the message. I think it's time to go home. <laughs> I don't think we're going to live another 51 years. I don't think so. I don't even want to be here. <clears throat> Amen. There's so many songs in this book. I was praying, Lord, what a thing I don't remember. <clears throat> but at the cross... Had it not been for a cross, we would have been here. Amen? Amen? Only one man. There were many people died. And there were many who were hanged on the cross. But only one had hung on the cross, placed in the tomb, raised again, and he's right here tonight. Amen? Amen? Amen. But Crowley always says, all other gods are... What am I doing? <laughs> Amen. All right. So let's um, help me sing this song. You know, you're going to have brother, brother Timothy. He wouldn't be here right now. He's stuck in all the way in the Bronx. He called me two times. He says, please. I said, okay, okay. I'll do my best tonight, okay? You pray for me. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> How many knows this song? Amen. You sure? Amen. Okay, let's go on. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my soul bring down. Word he devoured that sacred head on such a wonderful And at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there my faith, I received my
Amen. Tell me another person. Father, mother, king, priest could give you that assurance. None. But there was someone many years ago before you and I were born. He knew you'd be standing here and you'd be rejoicing. Let's turn 174. When we go marching in. Amen? <clears throat> I'm a pilgrim and a stranger wandering through this world of on my way to that fair city When the saints go marching Oh, when the saints go marching When the saints go marching I saw me in the number When the saints go marching Oh, yeah. 
this time. I think we have a special by Mary and the this, this, this group or something like that. So could you all come up? By the time we just sing a little something. It's a short one. Let's try a little. I want to go back to a fast one a little bit again just now. Let's try number 10 in the meantime while you're coming. Teach me Lord to wait. Amen. Amen. So while they're getting ready we'll just try to sing this one. <clears throat> Amen. Are we happy to be here? Amen. Teach me, Lord, to wait down on my knees till in your Stepped out. Okay. All right. Miss Amari, would you like to sing your special right now? No? Okay. You're not too well. Amen. So we're going to sing again. Is that okay? They are waiting for someone to come. When they come, they let me know. We want to stand again one more time. If you don't mind, we'll, we'll pray this now. We don't have no plan or no program or nothing, but I want to sing this song. 
Actually, we want to sing this song. Are you comfortable in this, this world that you live in? No. You sure? No. Well, help me sing this song. I'm not comfortable. I'm ready to go home. 381. Amen. This world is not my home. Amen. Amen. And I'm just passing through. Oh, but everyone is here. So let me greet some of you. Um, I know you're standing, but everyone is here. The sun is here. And, um, okay, right, let me see how much time we have. That's the thing. Mary and Brother Peter, his wife, sister, Sister Peter, whatever it is. Uh, okay, uh, we have Sister Gaitri and another sister there, and I don't remember her name. And um, last night we greet everyone, amen. So, is anybody didn't come here last night? Beside Brother Peter and his family, anyway? All right, uh, oh, and um, my wife's cousin, Sister Golden, and her husband, Brother, Brother Paul, amen. And so, let's try and sing the song in the meantime. Brother, Brother, Brother Jay, you would come and just pray for us in the meantime. Just come on. You wonder, I know people pray before and then have songs, so we like to do all the different work. Just want to pray now for this remaining part of the service. Let's just uh, bow our heads, close our eyes, look to him. Amen. He is the only one that is worthy. Amen. And we want to give him all of our praises. We worship Him, we glorify Him, we thank Him, and we love Him. Amen. Dear precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we approach Your throne of grace and mercy, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts, Father, for bringing us here together again, Lord. What a wonderful thing it is for brethren, O God, to dwell together in unity, Lord. Father, we feel Your holy presence amongst us tonight, Lord. You promised in Your Word, Lord, wheresoever two or three are gathered in your name, let you be in their midst to bless them, Father. And we receive that promise, Lord. Lord, in our hearts, dear Father, all that we desire to do is just to worship you, to love you, Lord, to thank you for your goodness and your grace, Lord, for your tender mercies, Father, for choosing us, Lord. Oh, Father God, for giving us eternal life, Lord. Father God, what better thing, dear Lord God, is there than eternal life, Lord. We humble ourselves, Father, before you, and we ask, oh God, that you bless each and every one that has come in, dear Father, every home represented, Lord, every need we place before you, in that mighty and holy name of Jesus, Lord. And Father God, we believe tonight, Lord, that whatsoever need that is place before you, Lord, that you would answer, Lord. Amen. Bless your servant, Lord, and Hallelujah. our precious brother, Lord, Hallelujah. Brother Ferguson, tonight in a special way. Amen. Father, all the different ministers, Lord, that has come forward, and Lord, the lady, Lord, we're waiting under expectation, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, that you speak to each one of our hearts, Lord. Bless Brother Ryan in a special way tonight. Lord, may you have the preeminence in the remainder of the service. Yes, Lord. Lord, all that we do and say, Father, yes, is to glorify that name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we thank you, O oh God, for this message, Lord. We can't, Father God, stop thanking you for Amen. what you have done in this end time, Lord, by giving us, Lord, a gift, dear Lord. Father God, has been overlooked in the world, Lord. But we receive that gift, Lord. Hallelujah. We receive our Elijah for today, Lord. Yeah. We receive the message. The message of Malachi 4, Revelation 10, 7, Lord. Father God, Lord God, as they said, Father, as they said, Lord, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. Father, tonight, Lord, we claim that, Lord. We believe it, Lord. The anointing of that, oh God, that God of heaven amongst us tonight. We honor you and we glorify you, Father. Lord, uh, as little songwriter sang a little song. 
Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Oh God, that song was, it went like this. Something beautiful. Something forgetting sometimes sometimes people bring snacks and uh, dessert and thing and I keep forgetting but I want to personally thank everyone for that I think my daughter made uh, alu pie I think my son they made polari if you don't know what is that it's something to eat <laughs> sister Pearly damn she called me she's not gonna make bar but not the one that we know like that is a little one like that and she also brings something guess what for the puja <laughs> yeah, she makes a mambo, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a sweet something, which I'm not supposed to eat too much of that, but, but we break the rules tonight, amen? And um, if anybody brought, I don't know, and we brought other things too, so after the service, we will have a little snack, amen? Is that okay? Amen. Okay, amen. I think my son wants to sing a song, a uh, special or something, quickly, and um, we've got to watch this time quickly, this, this clock does work fast. <laughs> Man, God bless you all, amen? amen. You happy to be here? Amen. 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 Uh, first, I want to say, uh, Ramesh, what do you think about giving the devil a credit? Think that's good? No. But I want to give him credit. You know why? For trying and feel miserably. Yeah, amen. Yesterday, he tried to keep me back from the service. So I had one job. I'm a truck driver in the city. And they sent me to Brooklyn and so said, okay, I'll be done by 1 o'clock. One o'clock, I said, we're going to come home. They call me to go back into the city. With, who knows, Brooklyn, East 91st and Dipmuts. Yeah. Back into the city in gridlock, it's another two hours. I said, fine, I went back. I went back from there. I got to go all the way down to Hapa, which is Paz's exit, all the way down. I pray for the place to close <laughs> so I can go straight home with the truck and be in service. Yeah. And I got home. And I, when I get to exit 49, I call my boat. I say, Sorry, the place is closed. Amen. Took the truck straight home. I was here on time. Amen. Amen. So if you serve a risen Savior, amen? Yes. No matter what. And he's in the world today. Yes. Amen? So I sing that little song for you. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is with me, whatever man may say. I see his hands of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him. He's always there. He lived, he lived. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian. 
lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah for Jesus Christ my King the hope of all who seek in the help of all who I need him, he's on my side. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow.
going to say one more song. We'll be right on time, I think. Let me ask you a question. And I want you to be honest, okay? Uh, but I've all you know how to answer this question. Don't worry. How many of you are bedroom slippers? It's a funny question. Do you have one? If you don't have one, I'll buy one for you. How many have one? Wait a minute. I'm serious. If you have one, put your hands up. No, 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 not it. I'm talking about this. Good. So I'm not gonna preach over you. You want you put your bedroom slippers by your bed, right? Yeah, man. Like I do. What I want you to do when you go home, they're gonna push you so far down inside. You know why? Because you know what? You're gonna kneel down and get it out. So you can kneel down and put it out. Hey man, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. One more song. Let's stand. Amen. And we're going to do a little action in this one. Amen. Amen. We, we're happy people praise the Lord anyway. Amen. We're going to sing, This world is not my home. Amen. And we want to say like we mean it. And I, by the time, I may take a, a minute from Brother Fogel. <laughs> you kill me for that. Okay, this world is not my home, okay? All right. I'm going to start it the right way. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door.
Oh, that Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just over in glory land, we live in earth. The saints on every hand that shout in victory. Not my home, then Lord, what will we do? The angels better us, and we cannot be at home in this world anymore. Sing it like it's you now. Oh Lord, we know we have no friend but you. And not our home, then Lord, what will we do? The angel beckons us from heaven open door, and we cannot feel a home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know we have no friend but you. In heaven, not our home. Then, Lord, what will we do? Praise the Lord, amen. The one thing I don't do is take up offering. My, my boy remind me about offering. Could we just sing a little song and just, you feel free after the box, write your however you want to do it. It's fine, amen. We keep standing and however, if you let the, the box, let it be there. It's fine. Do you believe this world is not our home? Amen. amen. So glad I'm yours. I want to sing this. Don't, I take a couple minutes over the focus on time. I, I, I repent one time. But um, we have to do offering that, so that's not part of what I was doing. Uh, I think it's, um, uh, what is it, I forget. There's a song I sing all the time. Uh, uh, 219, no, is that right? I'm not even sure. No, I want to sing right before that. Mm, I don't know. I know what I want to sing, but I don't know what the song is. We try and sing something else. Let's try and sing. All over the world, the spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. Hallelujah. All over the world, it's a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord. Down in my heart, the spirit is moving. Down in my heart, as the prophet said it would be. Deep down in my heart, it's the mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. And the Lord has All over the church, the spirit is As the prophet said it would be All over earth A mighty revelation Of the glory of the Lord As the water covers the So deep down in my heart The spirit is moving Deep down in my heart As the prophet said it would be in my heart, it's a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. One time, all over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, it's a mighty revelation. 
of the coming of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea, where deep down in my heart, the Spirit is moving, deep down in my heart, as the prophet said it would be. Of the glory of the Lord and the waters of Amen. We want to want to bow heart to pray for the offering and, and have our brother come up at the same time, Brother Ferguson. And just before we pray, for you who doesn't know, Brother Ferguson is uh, he will tell you all the rest, he is uh, the official translator for the French message in around the world. The biggest uh, translation in the entire world. And as we said last night, we testify, we take forever and ever. Whatever the Lord lay upon his heart, we pray that God will use him to his honor and glory. Our Heavenly Father, we could sing all night, we can pray all night, we can worship all night, which we will do when we get over on the other side. It's time, Lord, that we listen to your word. We pray and you bless it to each and every heart. Bless the offering, Lord, has been taken up, which is a part of this service, which I always forget, Lord. And make it, Lord, be useful to your honor and to your glory. We commit all things into your hand. We commit this service into your hand again, and we commit our brother into your hand. And we pray that you would have your own way, that every one of us would go back home rejoicing. Amen. We ask you this, Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I don't know where he is, but he. So we say a little chorus while you are standing that he can come. Is he some down? Don't say it. He don't say it, right? Yeah. So not my fault then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when he comes. All right, praise the Lord. I had two more songs. I would just choose one of them. A very soft one, so it'd be in, in writing tone. It'd be like um, uh, 28, if I remember right. And I think it should be a blessing to each and every one of us. All of them were blessings anyhow. Praise the Lord, amen. You gotta keep standing. Let me walk, blessed Lord, in the way thou hast gone. Then straight to the land of Oh 
praise the Lord. What an anointing. Yes, sir. What a presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, he's he's here among us. Yes. There's no doubt in our mind. Yes. Amen. Amen. And when he comes, it makes the difference. That's yes. right. I agree. Now you can be, you can be seated. God bless you all. Is everybody happy? Yeah. Amen. We used to sing a little chorus. If you know it and you're happy, clap your hands. Yeah. If you know it and you're happy, say amen. amen. If you know it and you're happy, then your life will surely show it. Yeah. If you know it and you're happy, clap your hands. Yeah. Wonderful. Amen. All right. So we're really grateful to God amen. for what he has done for us. Amen. amen. What a blessing. Amen. What a a presence, amen, and I thank the Lord used Brother Ram to do a wonderful job tonight in leading the song service. Certainly appreciated that. Amen. And uh, Brother Timothy couldn't come. I didn't know that Brother Timothy was such a talented song leader until last night. Oh my, I sat in the meeting I said, if ever I have to come up and lead a song service, pour me, amen. Uh, there's no way I could even come close. You might not believe me, but it's true. I, I always feel a little bit like what Brother Jay was telling me. Where's Brother Jay? And Brother Jay told me, he said, Brother Ferguson, if I try to lead the song service, the, the people might run out of the hall or something. <laughs> and when he says that, I think he was just echoing me. But I think he prayed tonight and sung a song or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was really good. Yeah, amen, amen. I think, you know, I think, Brother Jay, you're a little bit too hard on yourself. Yes, I, huh? I agree with you. I think he did way better yeah, than I will amen. do. See, I, I think uh, I did a special once with my daughters, and you know what I did? I got up there and I lowered my voice just as low as I could and let them sing. And then you know what someone did? They taped everything. <laughs> I used to go to Manitoba, and I thought they wouldn't tape it, and they made a whole tape on a cassette of my singing. And when I heard that thing, I says, what an awful cassette of singing. You know, talk, I just try to make a wonderful noise to the Lord. Yeah. Heard our sister sing tonight, and what a blessing. Yeah. But I know on the other side, I'll have the voice to sing, so I'm not worried about that. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. And um, Brother Ram told me he was 15 minutes late, but that's all right. We forgive him for that, Brother Ram. I forgive you for that. Amen? God bless him. And uh, I have, last night after I left the service, I, because we pulled into that, into that inspiration, because for, to those of you understand the moving of the Spirit of God, it is not just something intellectual that we look for. It is not like a theory or, you know, like someone would, you know, have a book of ethics or something like that. It is a living reality of a God that moves and acts and does things for us. Amen, amen, amen. And last night we pulled into a, a, a strong anointing into that challenge of inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And of course, when that anointing comes down, it makes a difference. And then I was back there and I was talking to Brother Dominic and Brother Dominic was telling me that he saw some things last night that he never saw in his life. Amen, I agree. And it made it different to him. And uh, tonight I wanted to go back because I think maybe a couple of you were not there last night and I wanted to kind of go back and last night's meeting and get up. Then I, I wanted to go into something completely different and then the anointing, it looked like the Lord pulling me back. And then I began to pray and something came in my heart that I shared with the church back home that I think is a very important thing to share with you all. Amen. Because many, many Christians pray, and then they got question marks. Did God really hear my prayer or what? Amen. And those days when I had question marks and whether I got an answer or not are the days that are gone. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of share with you, if possible, because sometimes we speak in words and trust that the Holy Spirit will take these words and convey that it becomes a reality to you as it is to us. Yes. Because to me, you know, if I get here, I can read my Bible, like any minister could, and stand here and give you a good lecture, and read, quote, scripture after scripture and stuff, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine and good and dandy, but it's different to when you see the Holy Spirit come 
and take the word of God and make it real to you. Yes. Then that word is quickened or made alive. Amen. And I think my brother Ezekiel said to me, I heard you a minister. Yes. Are you? Yes. All right. I didn't know that. And I was kind of, I have to be careful when picking on these preachers, you know. I was kind of picking on him. But he knew I love him. And I just Amen. looked and I was impressed. Since he's sitting right there, let me use him as an example. And then after the meeting, Brother Dominic told me, he said, did you know that Brother Ezekiel was a minister? I didn't know. I didn't think, you know. And uh, forgive me, Brother Ezekiel, no, because buddy. sometimes before I used to be able to remember every, you know, I'd see a brother's face and I remember to see their names and I would remember and he's brother so and so and this is sister so and so. Until I made my first trip into Africa. <laughs> and when I made my first trip into Africa, I met with probably, I would easily say about 20 to 25,000 brothers in the various, some of the countries. That, that was when the work was still in its infancy when I went. And then uh, I remember we had Brother Billy Paul and Brother Joseph and Brother David Branham, and I was sitting there in Kinshasa. The congregation was about 5,000 at the time. And uh, they put us to, to, sit, to, to, to sit down, and the members of the church were passing, shake our hands, and I shook hands with people until my poor right hand got wore out. And then I shook hands until my poor left hand got wore out. And then I put one hand under the other like this to shake hands. And I'm brother so and so. And I'm sister so and so. And I'm brother 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 so and so. And that was just in one meeting. And afterwards, my political mind just blew. I, I, well, who, who is brother so and so? Maybe it's, you know, and then it just wasn't possible. And then uh, traveling up in the Cameroon and those countries at the time. And then since that, the message is just blew, blossom. And in the Congo right now, we probably have. It's bordering about, I don't want to stretch the stories. I want to try to be conservative to you. We probably have anywhere between 1.6 to 1.8 million believers of this message. Uh, in the country. So anywhere between, I would say the lowest figure, the lowest, which I, would, I could think of, would be 1,600,000, 1.6. The closer, maybe right now it could probably be bordering into the two million believers yes. in the Congo, uh, which represents more than probably about three or maybe four, five percent of the country. About five percent of the country are missing believers. There was a little village that you could enter into, and the whole village is just believers. <laughs> uh, so mighty has the word of God grown. Amen. And God has done mighty things, amen, and it's just been incredible to see what God has done. <laughs> you know, some of the, um, the believers in the Congo, Congo Kinshasa, when they were dropping bombs, they thought that they could run into the Catholic Church and hide. And they ran into, into the Catholic Church to hide, and a bomb fell on the church and blew it up and killed 150 of them. There's no refuge in error. <laughs> Amen. But here's the difference. In Bujimai, the military attacked. And they took a picture of a cloud in the form of a man's hand over the church. And the believers refuge in the church, and not one of them were even hurt. Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! Yes! Look, I get to testify tonight. I, I'm so happy to see my niece here, Trudy, with us. You know, I love Trudy so much, and she's here, and, you know, I, kind of took the place of a dad to her now. <laughs> so I'm kind of happy to see her. But I share a little testimony with you. You probably heard it before, I don't know. But there was a Swedish missionary that came to the Africa. And uh, he decided that to missionary the Africans, he will have a farm and plant crops and give them jobs to do, and like that, he could start doing missionary work. So he was sponsored by the church and came down from Sweden, and he built himself a nice building, big enough to have the, the workers to sleep there. They had their quarters to sleep, and then a big farm, and he began to farm. So he employed the locals over there, but he noticed that there was one local that was different from the rest of them. Right? So he came to this, brother, and he said to him, you're different. He said, I'm a missionary. I'm a 
a Swedish Baptist missionary. He said, but there's something different about you. Yeah. He says, you're honest, you work, you, you do your work, I could tr you're trustworthy. You know, what is the difference? What makes you different to the rest of the workers that I have? And then the little brother looked at him and he says, have you ever heard of a man called William Marion Branham? <laughs> well, the Swedish missionary, you know. <clears throat> you know. <clears throat> so he said, I read a book. He says, and this book changed my life. Amen. And he says, and that's why I'm like this. So the Swedish missionary didn't digest this too nicely. <laughs> so what he did, he came to the little brother a little bit afterwards, you know, and he said, listen. He said, you're my best worker. I don't want to get rid of you. He said, if you will burn all the books of this man, he said, because he's a false prophet, he says, I will pay you my money. And so the little brother said, listen, he said, are you are my boss. He says, and, uh, and uh, I'm your worker. He says, uh, he says, if you, if you want to fire me, he said, it's up. he said, that's up to you. He says, but I cannot burn these books because he said, I read the books and it changed my whole life. Amen. So, the Swedish, the Swedish missionary wouldn't digest this. Mm -mm. A little bit, you know, mm. <clears throat> what is he going to do? So, when the believers, when all the workers were out in the field, the Swedish missionary went into this brother's room. He took all the books of Brother Branham. He took them outside. He poured gasoline on them, and he laid them afire. And when the books of Brother Branham were burning, a wind came up and blew the fire in the house, and his whole house burned down. <laughs> when the Swedish missionary saw the whole house go up in fire, he sold whatever he had, went back to Sweden, and never heard about this man afterwards. <laughs> Our God is God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> yes. Hey, oh, Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. What a yes, mighty God. What a mighty God. Yes, sir. Oh, we could talk about all the mighty things. Yes. Amen. He has done. And yes, sir. What a mighty God and all so many testimonies. Things what he has done, amen. <laughs> a Catholic priest, I met him in the Congo. He was my bosom friend. And one brother took a church age book and put it in his hand and said, Read this. He read the church age book and his eyes came open. And so <laughs> he was a far he had he had nine parishes under him. <laughs> and so he got those nine parishes into the message. And he became the distributor for the message. The voice of God in that area. All right, that's a Catholic priest. In Congo Brazzaville, one old brother went and gave a witch doctor. And you know, you know what a witch doctor is. Here, you know, you hear about it in theories, but... You go to Africa and the witch doctor is like a god in the village. Yeah. His word is law. Mm -hmm. And so um, this witch doctor, he wrote us a letter after. Uh, one brother gave him a church age book. So he read the church age book. His eyes come open. He said, wow. But I remember meeting the witch doctor. And some of these, some of these witch doctors, they have, they have a power, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you remember hearing me talking about him? I remember I was going once, I was going to go into the, into the diamond mine regions of Africa at the time. We were laying the foundation for the distribution of the message right across into the deepest parts of the forest. And so I saw this man, he was a little curious because, you know, he was waiting. I was waiting in the ministry. I had to go to the Ministry of, of Finance or something to get permission to go into the diamond mine regions or the Ministry of Interior. I don't remember which ministry, but he was there, not far from me. So he had on stuff like, it looked like a monkey skin over him, monkey skin garment on him it was the skin of some animal and I didn't know what kind of animal it was I thought it looked like maybe be a monkey or something anyway he had a bone the bone pierced this side of his nose and came out from the other side here so I couldn't I couldn't help noticing this piece of bone that the or some animal bone that he pierced his nose and it went through here then he had a little wine in his hand with a tusk of an elephant and ivory and then he had bones all over the clothes he had so he looked so curious I tell myself, I said, I want to get a little close to this man. <laughs> so, 
I went and got a little close sat with him. I'm curious, you know, a little bit curious. And you know, you travel into those countries and you have to be very careful with your curiosity. Yeah. Because if you're too curious, you're going to get into trouble. Yeah. And if you're not curious enough, you're not going to learn nothing. <laughs> so you got to keep a hat, you know, you got to pray and have a bow. See? Anyway, I asked until I got close to him. So I began to talk to him. So I said, well, who are you? So when he began to talk to me, that bone moved back and forth. So he's talking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he told me what he was, you know, and he was one of these witch doctors, you know, head of the witch doctors from the southern part of the Congo. So I said, yeah, we got libraries and there. I talked to him about Brother Branham. He said he believed the Bible. He said he believed in prophets. He said he believed in miracles and stuff, you know. So I kind of shared with him, and then, of course, he went in to see the ministry because he represents those people to the government. So I told him, I said, can I take some photos of you? He said, sure. I took, I took about five to six photos of him came back to Canada. At the time, we didn't have the, the cameras like what we have now. And every photo of the witch doctor turned out blank. I didn't get one single shot of him. And he, he because they told me, they said, we don't want you to take photos of us, because they believe if you take a photo, you can capture their, their soul on the photo. That's their belief. See? And so they didn't, didn't want that. Anyway, I came back, all the photos went blank. <laughs> and so uh, this witch doctor in the Congo now, he took the Bible, I'm not the Bible, I'm sorry, the Church Ages book, and he read it and his eyes came open. He said, wow, this is the truth. So he went now, he got baptized in the name of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. and he went back now, and when he got baptized in the, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it caused a stir among the local Pentecostals and Protestant churches, because never in the history of their, all their work in the evangelistic campaigns have they ever heard of a witch doctor being converted. So they invited this man to come into the church and tell them how you was how you were converted. How could you? I mean, you you are like a god in the. I mean, to you who are here from Africa, you know what I'm talking about. You folks that are born in the Caribbean islands, you have no idea what a witch doctor is. This man is like a god in the village. What he says is law. He has, he's more powerful than the president of the country. The president. If he tell the people go against the president, they go against the president. His word is law. He, he's a powerful man and to see a man like that will humble himself accept the message and reject such stuff well the, the presbyterians and the pentecostals and them and he went in and testified and his testimony on the basis of his testimony he baptized 1300 people in the name of the lord jesus Our God is God. Amen. Uh, there's so much we could talk about about these things, you know. But my sister Sybil, where's she at? Sybil, where are you? Yeah, there she is. So Sybil, you see all these things? We can see I could talk about all these things and what our God has done. What a mighty God is he. Amen. Yes. And we can talk and testify and we can rejoice in these testimonies. But I think we need to look at the word of the Lord. Amen. And it's getting a little late right now. And uh, I was promising that we'd probably start a little earlier. But it's all right. We can, you know, we can go. So instead of me going, there's something I want to share with you. And it's something that the, the Holy Spirit has been doing with me this year. Is to share with the people a very important key. And it's, and to you here, you probably haven't seen a lot of that. Maybe some of you have. But in our church back home, we've seen a lot of miracles, but in a specific way. In that, I pray for the sick and we get an answer from God. And I can look at the person and say, God has heard to pray for you. Amen. Now, we are not a prophet to be able to discern the secrets of the heart and stuff, but we can get an answer. And then this answer that we get from the Lord, uh, one brother came and, you know, a couple of brethren came and asked me, he said, Brother Ferguson, how do you know when God answers your prayer? Yeah. But now, I, I kind of wondered, because even when I was talking today about it and thinking about it, it's a big question in the minds of a lot of Christians. Could you get an answer from God? And how do you get an answer from God? Yeah. And it kind of links up with what I brought last night. We could take from last night and go a little further. And then what I want to share with you is first to establish with you that it is scriptural to know that, yeah. that God gives you an answer, and then to know how he answers your prayer. Yeah. Now you said, Brother Ferguson, could you tell us how he answers our prayer? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the message and the word of God tells us. And then... It's not just a matter of the message and the word of God because any man could make a claim. I could tell you what God answered my prayer. 
But then it's when it, you see the answer for yourself. When God comes along and you see the reason. You, you see? All right, give you a little example. There's a little brother, and this happened many, many times up in our church. A little brother, he's from way up in the north. Okay? And uh, he's a Pamelo brother. Uh, he's, we call him Michio, but he's Michael Pamelo. And so he, I met him once, and he, I said, what's, so brother, uh, brother, another brother called Brother Jock Hill told me, he said, Brother Ferguson, he said, he's been out of job now for a couple of years. I said, out of job? You don't have a job? No. I said, him, why did you come tell me? He said, well, Brother Ferguson, I don't want to bother you. But you. I said, you don't bother me if you don't have a job and you're looking for a job. I said, what bothers me is if you don't bother me. I said, you don't tell me anything. I said, now, why don't you tell me something? I'll put my faith with you. Amen. I said, all right. I said, I'll pray for you. So I prayed for him. And that night, I, I knew I had an answer. So I looked at him in front of the whole congregation. I said, Brother, I said, Brother, Brother Michael, he was sitting to my left. I said, God has heard the prayer for you. You're going to get a job. Amen. So it didn't take very long. In about a week or two after, he got a job and he was working. I said, it's another little brother. He come to me and he said, well, Brother Ferguson, it's been about, I think, three or four years. He said, I've been looking all over the place, can't find a job. I said, you've been not working now for about three years. I said, you didn't come tell me anything. <laughs> well, you know, we don't want to bother. I said, bother. I said, don't even talk about that. I said, all right, we'll pray. So just come up when the anointing is upon me. He says, let's see what the Lord will do. Came up, the anointed was came down, prayed with him. So when I prayed with him, I said, Brother, God has heard the prayer for you. I said, You're going to get your job. He looked at me, he said, All right, he left. Now we have to come back and ask another question. You know what happened to him? He had two good job offers and he didn't know which one to take. <laughs> he called him in. So he said to me, He said, I don't know which one to take. He said, Pray that the Lord would lead me now, which one to take. <laughs> Could I share with you a little strange one? I think I shared it already. Let me share this one little strange one. <laughs> There's two sisters. Two sisters came to the master. One sister, I'll tell you her name. I can probably tell your name. And then one of them, she just went to meet the Lord. One of them, her name was Sister Jeanne in French. So she's Jeanne, and she's a Nato. So she came, when she came and got baptized, she and Sister Rachel, and Sister Jeanne, her husband, divorced her. And Sister Rachel, her husband and her were separated. Sister Jeanne was separated from her husband for about 10 years. And Sister Rachel, she and her husband were separated for about five years. So I told Sister Jeanne, I said, what do you want, the Lord? I said, when the anointing comes down, what do you want? I said, God isn't changed, you know. God did it with Brother Branham. He took Brother Branham home, but the same anointing is here. God is still a God of miracles. You know, we, 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 we believe it's not anything that we have over anybody else, or we are better than anybody else. We, we, I can't say, well, I'm better than anybody else. Or better. No, 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 no. But God hears our prayer. Amen. And if you hear our prayer, well, praise the Lord. Yes. So anyway, <clears throat> Sister Jeanne now, she says, well, no, please. I'm going to tell you all some things here. Maybe I don't know if I should say, but I'll say. She says to me, she says, well, Brother Ferguson, she says, my husband and I, we are separated, we are divorced. She says, 10 years ago, she says, but I still love him. I said, what do you want the Lord to do? She says, well, I, I want him back. I said, all right. I said, what's the con condition? She says, well, Brother Ferguson, he's living with another woman. I says, and? She says, and they're planning to get married. I says, well, now please, I'm going to say something here. Please don't misunderstand me. No, please, I beg you all. Because this could, if you misunderstand me, it could throw a little damper for the service. But I want to share this with you. I says, well, you know what we will do? She says, what? I said, I will pray that God will send an evil spirit between the both of them and they'll fight. She says, could we do that, Brother Ferguson? <laughs> I said, sure. I says, come up when the anointing is upon me. She says, in front of the whole church. I says, I'll pray in such a way that the church will not understand. I says, you will understand and I will understand. I says, but you'll see what will happen. I said, we'll, I said, they'll be like dog and cat. <laughs> so, so she came up that night. And I prayed. And I said, Lord, <laughs> the evil spirit. <laughs> I just prayed. I said, Lord, you know the answers. You know, Lord, all things are possible to you. I said, evil de I said, demons are under your control as well as angels. <laughs> I said, you know, Lord, what is in our hearts, what we desire. Amen. And I said, amen. And she says, amen. And I said, now, sister, he heard the prayer. He'll be all right. Amen. The, the good thing of it is when we get that answer back. Yeah. Anyway, the both of them, Brother Ram, begin to fight. 
So anyway, when she called me back, she said, the purpose is after we prayed. She said, it looked like it got worse. She says, no, they have a date. They have a date. They finally get married. I said, don't worry. I said, don't worry. I said, it's a good sign. It gets worse. It gets better. Don't worry. <laughs> she said, well, praise the Lord. She held a fight. And then an evil spirit came between the both of them. They were, fight. they were fighting day and night. He came from work to fight. He leave to go back to work to fight. He came back home to fight. Until he couldn't stand it no more. He said, ah, I said, I can't live no more with you. He said, ah. So she told me, she said, well, what am I going to do? I said, just write him a little note and just tell him you're thinking about him and you're praying for him. I said, that's all. Don't tell him he's guilty or anything. Just tell him that. So she did that. I said, it's very important. Just do that. So she did that. And one night I'm at the platform and I look back in the church way back there and I saw this man sitting near her. I didn't know who he was. So after the meeting, at that time we were in the old church and the base, my office was in the basement. He came down into my base and I said, well, we've been praying for you. I didn't tell him what we were praying about. <laughs> I said, well, we've been praying for you. I said, it's time you show up. And right away, we really had a good contact. He accepted the message. I baptized him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the both of them came back together. And they're still together now. That's been about 25 years ago. All right. That's the decision. Sister Rachel now, she said, well, what about me, Brother Ferguson? I said, well, the Lord answered prayer for you. I said, I can tell you, he heard your prayer. Sometimes there are times when we don't know, but there are times when we know. So she said, well, what's going to happen? I says, I don't know. I says, let's trust the Lord. I said, the Lord will. I said, what we do is this. I said, we ask the Lord to send a messenger after him. I said, where he live? She said, well, Brother Ferguson, he's all the way in Sherbrooke. I'm not even sure what address he is. I said, the Lord knows the address. Let's send, I said, we'll send any, a messenger there. So what happened is this man contacted her. She told me, she said, Brother Ferguson, he contacted me. I said, that's good. And then she says, not only did he contact me, she said, we are talking right now, good. And then he came back with her. He got baptized. He was a Baptist. He got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. accepted the message. Amen. Earlier this year, that's been about 25 years ago, earlier this year, she went to meet the Lord. Amen. And he is still in the message. Last Thursday when I went to Drummondville, he was still there in Drummondville. Yeah. So our God is a mighty God. Amen. Now, there was another sister. Her name is Sister Joanne. She was separated from her husband. They were separated for, I think, about five or ten years. So she came to me. She said, well, Brother Ferguson, I don't know where he is. She said, I haven't seen him for about five years. And she says, I want you to pray that the Lord will bring him back so I could see him and make my mind up what I want to go back with him or not. I said, all right. I said, I'll pray for you, whatever you want. I said, whatever you desire in your heart. The Bible says, you know, nothing good will he withhold from them that love him. Yeah. I said, all right. So we prayed. I said, all right, God prayed. I said, my, the answer. I said, God, I said, God has given the answer to my prayer. Praise the Lord. Got the answer. So getting the answer from the prayer now, her husband came back. And when he come back and she saw him, she came to me. She said, Brother Ferguson, I don't want him. She says, where does he go back? I said, are you sure? She said, yes, Brother Ferguson. She said, no, no, no. She said, no, it's not going to work. She said, let him go. She said, I don't want him to come bothering me. Pray that he would leave. I said, all right. I prayed. He left and she never saw him again. <laughs> Listen, the God we serve is a present help in the time of need when we trust him. That's the God that I serve. That's the God I believe in. Amen. Amen. That's the one that we got faith in. That's right. Now tonight Amen. we're gonna I want to share with you a little bit on how you know that God answer your prayer. Now I'll share with you all the quotes and the scriptures I have. Mm -hmm. And then I've shared with you some of my personal experiences with God. Uh, we go to the word, mm -hmm. see for yourself. This is what God wants for you. Because yeah. today, you know, Christians are all doctrines, this doctrine, and yeah. that doctrine, yeah. and yeah. this. And where is God? That's yeah. right. Come on now. Yeah. But where is the power of God? Yeah. But where is the Spirit of God that's moving? Right. Where is the action of that? Amen. Amen. Come on. My God. Is a living God. Amen. Our God Amen. is a living God. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Amen. Oh, there's so many testimonies you can give, and things we can talk about, and all of this, and talk and talk. But let's 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 all stand as we go before Him in a little word of prayer. Amen. Okay. Father, you are so precious. Your word is so precious. Your presence mean, takes, means such a difference to us. And to see you, Father, in the power of your spirit moving and accomplish mighty things and to fulfill the promises that you've made. Oh, God, how it thrills our hearts. How it brings joy to us that we see testimony after testimony of the mighty things what our God has done. And Father, for all eternity, we will praise you. Amen. For all eternity, we will glory in the things that you have done. Yes, knowing that you're God, you're our God, and we are your people. Amen. Then, Lord, we thank you. Yes. We thank you, Father. And you told us whatever we ask in your name will be granted. Yes. And we approach you in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Knowing that all things are possible to them that believe. And Father, as we come... Uh, Lord, if as it please you, you pull me away from that me meeting I wanted to share with the people tonight to something that you that I believe you want me to bring to the people. And this is an important key to this church. And Father, please don't let it go over the heads of the people, but may it anchor into their hearts, uh, their precious people. And we felt a, such a good spirit among them and their love for you. And Lord, let it not go over their heads, but let it go to their hearts. May the Holy Spirit take these things Put it into the hearts of the people. Help them not to forget the importance of these things, but to meditate upon these things, to cherish, to pray about it, to wait upon you as we give you honor and praise in Jesus' precious, wonderful name. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to have to ask you all to sit because I'm going to read several scriptures. That's all right. I kind of get into it in that kind of a, a, a mode of it because of the, the pandemic we have in, in Quebec that we usually all sit and uh, try to read the scriptures. Now, last night we read a couple of scriptures here for our uh, teaching, mm -hmm. and uh, we went back to the Proverbs, of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 29, which in the proverb it said, He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is, excuse me, he that is slow to wrath is of great, no, I'm sorry, it's Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. And then we also read Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. But so uh, God wants us to have the rule over our spirit. And then we went ahead to read the scripture here in Romans chapter 7. We read Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 25. I'm not going to go back on all these scriptures, mm -hmm. but in Romans chapter 7, you remember Paul speaking here, and I'm just going to read a little bitty, bitty, bitty part of it to save a little bit of time as we go into it. Romans chapter 7. Um, excuse me. And Paul speaking here uh, from verse 15. I'm not going to, maybe I'll skip it from verse 15 and let's see. Just excuse me here. My Bible seems to kind of the least, the pages stick together sometimes. Makes it a little hard for me and then my fingers get dry. Uh, Paul speaking here. Yes, let's read from uh, my, let's see here. Okay. Uh, okay. Verse 15. Well, let's take from verse. Mm, let's take from verse. Uh, I have to say here. Let's take from verse 11. And just read a little bit. Excuse me here. All right. Excuse me. <coughs> For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceiveth me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made debt unto me? God forbid. 
but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but I am carnal sold under sin verse 15 for that which I do for that which I do I allow not but what I would that I do not but what I hate that I do then and if then I do that which I would not I consent unto the law that it is good now then it is no more I that doeth it but sin that dwelleth in me let me ask you a question is there sin was there sin in Paul now you're quiet again like last night it's all right for I know that in me that is in my flesh notice what he says here in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, it but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward, after the inward man, but I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of from this from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now Paul's speaking like this. And like we mentioned last night, this is a very difficult scripture to read to understand if we look at it from the standpoint of just a carnal way of looking at things. But then the interpretation came to Brother Branham and he explained it to us, which we will read it as we go forward into the message. Then we took another scripture here, which was in, um, I'm gonna have to hurry. Last night we read another scripture, which I'll read again for you because of its importance and then we'll go to something else. And that scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter nine and verse 24 to 27. Where Paul spoke here, he said, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the price. So run that he may obtain. Now we're going to skip some of it and go right down to verse 27 to save some time. And Paul says, But I keep under my body and bring it under into subjection, lest that I lest, lest that by any means when I have, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a cast away. So he bring his whole body into submission. Now then we want to take one more little scripture here, a little scripture here. It's found in the book of Revelations. And I referred to it last night. And I'm going to read it just a little bit for you. Uh, and it's in Revelation chapter 3 and verse, I think it's verse 27. Let's see if I can get that very quickly for you. It's Revelation chapter 3. Yeah, and it's verse, no, verse 21 and 22 to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcome overcame and I'm set down with my father in his throne he that help an heir let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches let us pray father it please you to bless us it please you to call us it please you to give us a deep love for you we recognize your presence in our midst. We recognize that the blood, your blood has been applied to our hearts to cleanse us from all sins. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And we know, Lord, that the only way our sins can be remitted or pardoned is because you paid the price for us at Calvary. And we are so grateful for it that we stand tonight as we deem Christians, a people that has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And we thank you with all our hearts in Jesus precious holy wonderful name amen. Amen. amen now just to go back very quickly we will not spend much time on this but we will just touch it because by way of to bring it to your remembrance tonight but tonight we want to talk about God answering our prayer how God answers back when we pray it's important that because what is important to us is not our prayer our prayer is not as important as we think it is although the Bible tells us pray always what is the most important aspect is when he answers back. Amen. So when he answers back, that is what is important to us. Okay? Amen. All right. Now, tonight we want to look at that a little bit deep. 
and trust it will be a blessing to you. But just before we go, I want to share this with you just a little bit. As we we kind of hook up from last night's message, and then we will move a little bit deeper tonight. Now, I'm going to try my best to go as fast as I can, not to keep you all too, too late again tonight. And so, uh, we took the fundamental, the fundamental foundation for faith. Where Brother Branham says here, we read this. Now, there's something that's wrong. And in the beginning, God has created you to be the master of every circumstance. Amen. Last night, we went deep into that. Amen. that. That's the origin. That's authentic. Amen. That's God's word. There was nothing. Nothing could happen unless you was the master of it. Amen. That's what you were created for. Amen. Now you can sit in the meeting and say, yes, Brother Ferguson, and doubt it. It won't do you no good. That's right, but if you sit in the meeting and you believe it, yes. then God gives you it. Amen. Because all, Amen. Things, all things of God is received by faith. Yes. That's right. Then sin came along through the, through the fall and blinded the eyes of it. And now Jesus came along and redeemed it back. And now the Father gives you the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, giving you all these divine promises. Amen. So we went into this, we looked deep into it and see what the message tells us on it, Amen. that God has given us the power to master all circumstances. Amen. And then this power that he gave us to master all circumstances, the prophet of God calls it faith. Because faith, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Now then, in the perfect faith message, Brother Branham says, he said, now notice, notice now another. Perfect faith is a master of all circumstances. Amen. Perfect faith masters all circumstances. Amen. No matter what it is, it masters it. Amen. Now just watch. When you believe anything, do anything, and you've got faith in what you're doing, no matter what the circumstance is, that don't have one thing to do with it. Amen. See? It masters that circumstance. Amen. So when God gives you that perfect faith, you are the master of all You've got in you the power to master all circumstances. Mm -hmm. And we went on to show you uh, from the quotes how Satan comes in and what the Holy Spirit gives us that power to master, to be able to master or bring under control. And uh, Brother Branham went on to, to explain it. And um, here is what he mentioned. Excuse me. I just have to, I'm trying to hurry. And not forget anything to be able to be sure I give it to you all because we have one more meeting tomorrow and tomorrow the Lord willing for sure we've got something else I want to share with you that's a little different maybe to the way that you've heard that particular area that particular thought but let me just read this for you now brother Branham talking about here he's talking about it that faith masters all circumstances Amen. and you remember me reading this for you from the message faith of our, vic of is our victory he said, have faith, not just floating faith, not just a make-believe faith, but a real faith. Amen. And then we'll share with you how you get that real faith, what it is. I'm going to go with you tonight. So we'll go through the steps to make it all simple and to share you a little bit what the message says about it. Because faith is not as complicated as people think it is. Amen. You see, they make it complicated, and then tonight we're going to try to bring it very simple. Amen. And you see, because I don't believe in it complicated doctrine. When people talk complicated things, yes. me, I'm lost. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a simple preacher. Yes. And yes. simple, and we all are simple people. Yes. And it's a simple God. Yes. God makes himself simple, and they make it complicated, and complicated, yes. and complicated, yes. and complicated, and they explain, and they explain, and they, they have a definition of a definition, of a definition, of a definition, and they define the definition, and then define the definition of the definition, and define the definition of the definition of the definition of the definition. Of the definition. <laughs> Until you stand there and your mind is just you don't know what, it, what you're talking about. Yeah. To me, it's all a bunch of nonsense. Amen. 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 Amen.
just like we were in Beaselsburg, but then he pulled an eye. And we went to Brother Rudolph's church. And I was sitting right there. And there was a little brother sitting right at the top, and he was sitting down. And his foot, he came in, in, in the, and his foot was all, I don't know what happened to his foot, but it had all bandaged up. And he came in, 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 and he sat there, and he had one foot like this. And in front of all the people, there were hundreds of us sitting there. Some of the people from Holland and different places in Beaselsburg went, but Billy Porter and I went. And but I know Booten came from Holland. And he was still alive at the time. And this little brother there, but Billy Paul was talking about giving the, the te his testimony yeah. of how Brother Branham yeah. prayed for this guy that had six, his foot was six inches short on the other. Yeah. And he said, Brother Branham grabbed the man's foot. And Brother Billy Paul stooped down and grabbed the man's foot like this. And he says, and Brother Branham pulled it. And Brother Billy Paul pulled a little bit on the man's foot. Billy Paul looked at him and the brother looked at Brother Billy Paul. I was sitting right near the man. I was right there. I was sitting right, right there. And Brother Billy Paul pulled like this. And then after the meeting, we were going in our car. We were leaving Germany to go to Switzerland. And this man had his, his weed on his jaw and ran out from the church. Ran out from the church. Beating on Brother Billy Paul's car. And he said, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Now, Tell me all your explanation and all your theory and your this and your that and all the mathematics and your philosophy and your, your this and your that and the other. It means nothing to me. I want a God of action. Our God is a God of action. Amen. Our God is God. When Elisha, when, when Elisha came to the Jordan with Elijah's mantle on it, he didn't stand and preach to the God of all kind of theories. Bring all your religious theories and stuff. I'm going to work. He took the mantle and he says, Where is the God of Elijah? Wham! Amen. <laughs> And he went over on dry hand. Oh, glory to God. Amen. What a God he is. Yes. Amen. Look, let me try to hurry here. But the man says, <coughs> he says, now faith is a conqueror. Faith is an overcomer. We spoke of that last night. It just isn't a peacemaker. Now people that come, we will make peace. That's not bad. That's good. We need peacemakers. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Nothing against that. Please, we are not here to talk against peacemakers. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. So they are blessed. They have their place. Good. Amen. But faith is not a peacemaker. Amen. Faith doesn't come to just make peace. Amen. Faith comes to overcome. Amen. To bring the thing under. Amen. 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 Yes. To conquer it. To master it. Yes. Yes. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Two brothers. Uh, brother, you know, we are here to make peace. <laughs> You'll be all right with him. He'll be all right with you. And the, the little pot, whatever it is, boiling in the, in the, in the, in the, in the you know, in my heart. I'm, but he's equal. But I'm going to stay. But he's equal. No, faith is not like that. Yeah. Faith takes all of that together. And when I say, but he's equal. In good fellowship. That's what faith does. It Amen. overcomes. Amen. Uh, sorry. What is faith? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. What it does? What is faith? What is it to conquer? Conquer and victory is the same. To conquer, it means to beat down, Amen. to override, to handcuff, to show in prison. It means that the sin that once ruled you, Amen. you rule it now. Amen. It means that you have overcome. You whipped it. You are greater than it is. Amen. Now we took another little quote, and I'm not going to spend much time here, and then we're going to move on. We took another little quote on this. Everybody man says, you've gone by your feelings. Many Christians live by their feelings. I'm going to just mention this quick and go forward. Amen. Their senses, their feelings and stuff. And Paul talked about that as a law of sin. Yes. Where the devil comes along, I'm going to read just that one part for you, where Satan comes along. Yes. And he acts on your feelings, make yes. people believe to act on their feelings, live by their feelings. Mm -hmm. And I feel and I don't feel. And I feel and I don't feel. A Christian does not live by feelings. Yes. God will give you the feelings and thank the Lord for it. Amen. But when your feelings goes contrary to the word, deny those feelings. Yes. Right. Now, 
Let me just read for you one little quote on that, and then we are going to move forward as we go into our, this aspect of the message that I think all of you are eagerly waiting on. Now, Brother Branham here tells us, in the message here, prayer line. And he says here, he's praying, he said, Heavenly Father, now Satan is our adversary. And we know, and we know, and we are not deceived about his shrewdness and about his devicity. So we are not deceived. And a lot of people think they know Satan. And they think they know the, the tricks of the devil. And the real truth of it is, the devil is so smart that he hides his tricks. Yeah. That's right. So he could trick you and hide it so you don't know it's the devil tricking you. Amen. That's true. But it's all in unbelief and reasoning. Yeah. And it's not God. That's right. Now, <coughs> so when you hear them reasoning, they come to you. Like some brothers come to me and I step on this. And then I ask them one nice little question. Where is it in the word? Yeah. Okay, telling me this, 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 this. Where is the word? Amen. That little question, where it is in the word. Amen. Then you see, you see them, well, well, well. No, there's no, no, well, well, well. <laughs> bring me the scripture, bring me the quote. Exactly. Amen. Amen. If it's not in the Bible, it's not in the message, it goes to the trash. Amen. I agree with you. Amen. I agree with you. Use the trash. Yes. Trash it. What do you think you have a why do you have a trash bin in your house? <laughs> if you didn't have a trash bin in your house, your house would be full of all kind of trash. <laughs> why did you put it in there? To use. And I tell you the truth, at our house we use the trash bin every day. Yes, yes, true. And in this message, I use the trash bin every day. <laughs> to use the trash bin when there's trash around. Yes, that is true. <laughs> My wife always tell me, she says, well, Fergie, you've got to be careful now because you don't want to throw out good things in the trash. I said, I agree with you because you don't want to throw the message into the trash, but you want to throw the trash into the, into the bin. So you've got to be sure. When you know it's not in the world, you know right away it's trash. So don't hesitate. Crush it in the way. You keep it too long in your house and your house will begin to smell. Yes, <laughs> now, so we're not deceived about his shrewdness and his devices. We know that he's an evil man, and we know that he's shrewd, and he has lying wonders laying everywhere. And I know that he can work on that body of feelings and make people to rely to those old senses and of feelings and so forth. A lot of Christians do not realize. That is not everything you feel, it's you. Amen. Amen. Yesterday we went deep into that. But it is something that the, the people has to move away from. It's something that you got to start to pray. Because Brother Branham says, all your life has been wrapped up in your feelings. If you feel to pray, you pray. If you feel to go to church, you go to church. If you don't feel to pray, you don't pray. If you don't feel to, to listen to the tape, you will not. If you don't feel to read your Bible, you go by your feelings. Listen, we have to make a change. And if we make a change, it's to say, Father in heaven, it is finished. I will no longer live by my feelings. God has given me the power to bring that law. Because this flesh here, the redemption is in our soul. This flesh here has not been redeemed. So the senses of the flesh feelings and all of that, the devil gets into this and he gets to you. You've got to deny yourself. And when you deny yourself, Brother Brandon says, you deny your reasonings, you deny those feelings. When you recognize that they're contrary to the word of God, you know that it has nothing to do with you. It's not you and it is not God. So I'm, uh, so I'm saying this to you, my brothers and sisters. Stop Living by your feelings. Yes. Make that resolution to God now. Amen. You can be, you feel tired. You don't feel to pray because you're too tired. And therefore you go and sleep. And you get up the next day and you're still tired. And you can't pray. And sometimes for a whole month, you're tired. Day after day, you realize your tiredness is nothing natural. 
devils bring those feelings upon you. That's what Brother Banham is saying is Paul is talking about when he said that law of sin in my flesh. Yeah. You see, you feel tired. You come, like me, sometimes I'm coming. I remember once I was coming in the meeting and I was so tired. I said, Lord, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. If I got in the meeting now, I'm going to pray. And when the anointing struck me, the tiredness went. Listen, when the Holy Ghost come, the devil has to leave. Yes, right. Amen. Yes, I agree with you. Where is the tiredness? Gone. It's gone where it comes from. Yes. He came with it, he went back with it. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's I love this brother. Yes. Let him go back with it. Yes. He bring it. What do you want to keep it for? Amen. The man come and knock on your door. What's your name again, my brother? Ryan. Brother Ryan. Mr. Ryan, is, is your name Ryan? Rohan. Rohan, Rohan. Is your name Rohan? Yes. Here, this is your gift. But the man said, you bring a bottle of, there's a box right there with rattlesnakes and coral snakes. Amen. Sign for it. But here's your name on it. This is your address? Yes. This is your name on it. Don't sign. Amen. Take it back. <laughs> I sign to refuse. I refuse it. I don't just say I refuse it. I refuse it in Jesus' name. Amen. I've told the devil sometimes. I said, "Look, you want to bother me? Go, go, go somewhere." Funny, funny what I said. I said, "You can go." I said, "You want some place to visit? Visit a Jehovah's Witness or something like that." <laughs> They believe in a God that doesn't answer prayer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, what a blessing! Yeah, yeah, Excuse, Excuse me, you all understand what I mean. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All right. So we don't want to. We don't want to rely on those. So God has given you the power to master it. So sometimes, now before I used to listen, the devil tell me, "You're so tired." <laughs> can't pray. I didn't know it was the devil telling me that. Lord, my knees, Lord, please help me to pray. Lord, help me. I want to pray, Lord. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. And then one day the Holy Spirit began to deal with me when he opened up this message to me. I'm giving you the power to pray. What are you crying to me for? What are you crying to me for? Recognize what I'm giving, I'm giving you the power to pray. What nonsense is this? Pray, pray, pray. God help me to, Moses, why are you crying to me? Please go forward. Yes. Moses, Amen. I give you the power. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes. God gave it to you. Yes. What are you crying about? You can't pray? What yes. nonsense is that? Amen. I'll read for you a little quote in a little bit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Excuse me, church. Sickness is trying to the school, but it's gone. Amen. I have to confess it. I believe it. I don't care what he does. In fact, it's much better. Much better today. Than anyway. I tell my old body, he says, you know what? I was trying to pray and begin to feel a little sleepy. I said, no, sleep, leave. Amen. Sleep, I have to go. Amen. I said, I need to pray. Excuse me, church. I said, I need to pray. Amen. Sickness, I have to obey. Yes. The devil tell me, well, you get up the next morning, you'll be extra tired if you don't sleep. I said, no, I need to pray. Amen. I said, the anointing takes the, the, the sleepiness away. Amen. I went to bed about 1130. I prayed until about 1, 1 30. I mean, I got up about 1, 1 30. I prayed from about 1 30 till 6 o'clock in the morning. I went to bed at 6 o'clock. I got up at 8 o'clock. And I was fine. My, I felt as if I had slept all night. When you're in fellowship with God, you know what he does? He compensates for everything. Yes. Your lack of sleep, your this, your that. You pray to the Lord. You notice what happened. You got up the next morning, you're better than even before you were. Amen. Tell that old feelings, no. Amen. Tell that old tiredness, go back from where you come from. Yes. It's not me. Amen. Just tell it, tell it. I'm not tired at all. I'm not, I'm not too tired to pray. Amen. I'm not. I am not. I am not. Do not accept it. Amen. Amen. Jesus told me to pray. I got to pray. Amen. I am going to pray. Amen. I'm going to fall on my knees. I'm going to consecrate my life. I'm going to pray. That body of thing walking in my flesh, be gone. Amen. Go yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, you're 
never have a time of jubilee. You never have. Yes. You come to church and you feel you can run all around. Yes. You feel free. Do you know why? You have done the will of God. Yes. You have done what God has created you for. Yes. God has created you to master the conditions and you're doing it. Amen. Amen. And when you do that, then God comes in and can take control. Yes. Because everything is coming back under control of God. Amen. Now, let's go a little step further now. Amen. Now, all of this is done by faith. Now, we're going to go a little step further now. I'm praying that what I'm going to bring to you all tonight is not going to just be a theory, but it will come to you as it has come to me, a reality. Because this is for the body of Christ. All right, now I'm going to read for you several quotes as we're going to go in now, okay? And this is... um. This year is very important. Uh, Brother Branham in the message now, Faith by Experience, he says here, Now, it's been said, and it's true, that cowards die 10,000 times when a hero never dies. God wants people who are brave and can take their stand. Yes. If anything that Christ could not use in his kingdom would be a coward. Yeah. Now, we see here, he said, have faith in God. Amen. The first place, we should find out what faith is. Amen. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. This little, this little word faith gets mixed up lots of times with hope. Amen. And hope and faith, they're just as much difference as day is from night. Faith is the substance, and hope is what you're hoping for. Faith delivers. Amen. See, faith being the substance of things hoped for, then it will not just be a thought. But Adam continues, so it's not just a thought. It's just like me thinking here and thinking I believe. Yeah, it's just a mental thought. It's not faith. Okay, we'll get to it in a little while. Don't worry, it's not complicated. It would not be a thought. <coughs> it is a substance. Now, a substance is something that you, you have. Now, this, when Brother Branham preached like this in the perfect faith message and stuff, at the first time in the years gone by, it puzzled me. And I was intrigued by it, but it was for a purpose. Because when these things intrigue you and puzzle you, it's a step in the right direction. Because it stirs something within you to find out more from the Lord. And these things are important to God. Now, the ordinary carnal person doesn't have no stir. They don't care to go further. But there is something stirring in the inside of you that you want to find out, see? And that is important to God. Amen. Now, let's go a little further. Brother Branham goes on. He says now, uh, um, where am I here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He talk about faith being the victory and stuff, and then he says this. In the token message, Bakersfield, he says this. He says, the blood tonight is applied by simple faith. Just not nothing supernatural. It's right or wrong you everywhere. Just sim simply like a child. Reach out and get a hold of it and apply the blood. The high step is just like, he's talking about when you apply the high step in the Old Testament, the blood was applied by high step. When they killed the lamb, they applied the blood by high step. And high step was just a common weed found anywhere. And high step represents faith. Amen. But Abraham said the high step is just a simple childlike faith yes, for the believer. Yes, it isn't something out of your reach. Yes, you don't have to reach very far to get it. The high step that grows in that country, it goes out of the, the cracks of the walls. A little kind of a diamond shaped leaf. You could pick it up anywhere. Just as grass of, or weeds would be in the country. <coughs> he said that's the way faith is to, to be applied. Take faith rather and apply the blood of Jesus Christ by faith to the heart's door. Amen. So keeping this in your mind, that the faith that we are talking about here that moves mountains, the faith that does the impossible, the miracle working faith, the faith that we can go forward and live by, the faith that we use this to bring under control, is a very, 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 very simple, simple faith. Okay, Sybil? So Sybil, I want you to listen close now as we go into this. This is important. Now here is another quote I want to share with you, and this is where this particular quote here that I'm going to share with you 
is what meant a lot to me. And now from here, we're going to use it to go further. Okay? Amen. Now first, we're going to look at what faith is and the simplicity of faith. It's not something out of your reach. Let us see what it is. Amen. Listen close now. Yes. Brother Branham, in the message called Abraham, he said just that simple. It's just that simple faith is. And what I've taken these nights for to speak on faith is because people try to make faith complicated. God doesn't make it complicated. It's us that makes it complicated. And you see, because it's the reason why when you talk about faith, it's some kind of an abstract something that people got a thought in their mind. And an ima faith is not an imagination. It's not some kind of an abstract theory or thought or explanation or something that's putting in your head. <laughs> it's not that. Now, we'll get to you we we'll show it to you in simplicity. Okay? Now, let's go on. Amen. Brother Branham continues. He says, um, he, he goes on here. He said, I've taken these nights for to speak on faith. It's because people try to make faith complicated. And God doesn't make it complicated. Amen. It's us that makes it complicated. <laughs> Amen. 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 Excuse me if I say this. I was sitting in a meeting and heard a preacher preach at the pulpit. And he makes faith so complicated. <laughs> and so complicated. If you have a revelation, you don't need to tell the people how to get it or what to do. And then I said, Lord, I'm thankful. That I'm the, he makes it so complicated, but he's young. That the people living in the meeting, when you leave the meeting, you're doubting whether you have faith or not. <laughs> now, I'll tell you one of the things that the prophet of God tell you not to do. That's right. Many, many Christians, you hear them say, I have such a little faith. I don't have much. You know what you're doing when you when you do that? Hmm? Do you know what you're doing? Hmm? Do you know what you're doing when you're doing that? The prophet of God says, you are putting your faith to a test. You're testing your own faith. Have you ever now the devil will try will test your faith? God will try your faith. Why do you have to test your faith? Come on now. Come on now. Amen. 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 The prophet of God said, Don't do it. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Let me let's go into it and show you how simple this whole thing is. Go on now. Amen. And when you see it, when you realize it's so simple, you yourself is gonna say. My, it's so yes. simple. How come I didn't see it before? Yes. Tell us, brother. Tell us. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. God doesn't make it complicated. It's us that makes it complicated. Amen. We are going way out there trying to get something way out here. And here it is right there by us. Simple. Are you ready now? Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Come on now. All right. Here we go now. If you've got enough faith to walk across that floor, right. you've got enough faith for anything God promised. Amen. 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 Let's take Brother Jay. Brother Jay, you come here. You're my friend. We pick on Brother Easy Girl all the time. <laughs> Brother Jay, walk across the floor. Walk back, Brother Jay. You got faith. If you, if you got faith enough, you got faith enough. Here is it. Sit down. Not if you walk across the floor. Amen. Not if you could walk across the floor. No. Any unbeliever or hypocrite could walk across the floor. Yeah. But it's if you got faith yeah. that you could walk across the floor. Amen. What is that, Brother Ferguson? Let me show it to you. Somebody comes up and says, Brother Che, could you really walk across the floor? <laughs> yes. Could you really walk across the floor, Brother Jay? Yes. I don't think you could walk across the floor. I can. Now, why is he saying he could walk across the floor? 
sure. because he knows he could walk across the floor. Yes. He feels he could walk across the floor. Yes. That feeling he has in his heart is what the Bible calls the substance. Yes. And in the French Bible, it is called the assurance. Yes. And the prophet of God also calls it the assurance. Yes. It is the assurance that he could walk across the floor. Amen. All right? Amen. Let me take another example. Let's hold Brother Ezekiel back a little bit. Let's go to our brother, Brother Ramesh. Let's say we say Brother Ramesh. Here is an apple, eat it. Brother Apple takes an apple, eat the apple. Could you eat Brother Ramesh? Sure I can eat. No, you can't eat. Sure I can eat. No, you cannot eat. Sure, I can eat. I can eat. I can eat. It's not a problem with me. Well, the doctor saw, put a thing in his in his stomach here, put one in his back, measure his. Are you sure you can eat? Yes, I can eat. Why is he saying that to the doctor? Because what he is saying is not the fact that he is eating, but the fact that he have a substance. He has an assurance. He knows that he can eat. Now his assurance. His assurance is based on the fact that he has walked back and forth. So it is based on what we call an experience of walking. Yeah. Now when the Holy Spirit gives you the same assurance yeah. <clears throat> that your prayer is answered, yeah. it is not based on any physical thing. Yeah. You just know, just as you know you can eat, just as you know you can walk, yeah. it's not just a thought, you just know in yourself. Yeah. <coughs> it is that inner assurance. Hallelujah. Now, let's go further. Yeah. Let's go further. Amen. Now, Amen. what you do is, when you know that it exists, you can begin to reach forward for it, yeah. and you reach for it by your prayer. Yeah. Now, you use the power that is that God has given you mm -hmm. to bring your feelings under subjection yeah. that you can go before God, right. and you pray before God is, Father, now, I want that answer. I want faith. Yeah. Now, let me go a little further. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to read for you several quotes as we go on. Now, Brother Branham continuing. He says, if you got enough faith, if you've got faith enough to raise up your hand. But if you can raise your hand up. If you got enough faith, let's see, all of us here, you got enough faith to raise up your hand. You can raise your hand to my brother. All right? Here, here. You've got, if you've got enough faith to raise up your hand, why? You've got enough faith. You've got faith enough for anything else. Amen. Amen. Listen, not if you could raise up your hand. Any hypocrite could raise up his hand. Any unbeliever could raise up his hand. But it's if you got enough faith. Yeah. You see, it's a thing, right? It's something within you that you cannot explain. But you just know you could raise up your hand. You just know you could drive your... No, I'll go a little further. <laughs> it's simple faith. Just apply it with the high self that I've told you in the messages. Just take the blood and by simple faith. Just like, just like you eat. Amen. Amen. Forget it. Forget it. What's your name, my brother? Paul. Brother Paul, forget it. You can't eat. <laughs> you cannot eat, brother Paul. Forget it. Come on, Come on I can eat. Oh, why is he saying he can eat? He knows he's got. That what he has, as simple as it is, that's faith. And that kind of faith, when it comes from God, will achieve anything. It's that simple. But people, and when the complicated thing, complicated, 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 by all kinds of explanation, and explanation, and all kinds of reasoning, and this and that and the other, and you have to do this to have the faith, and you have to do this, and you have to know this, and all that bunch of stuff, it, it, it throws the congregation further and further away, and yes. the preacher too. And it's why when they pray, there's no answer. That's right. Amen. 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 That is so true. <laughs> One old sister, I was in, <coughs> I was in Macon, Georgia, a couple of years ago, and so I come in there, and she looked at me. She says, she says, I was wearing a tie, you know, the tie had a little 
crosses of Jesus and stuff with my Jesus on it. She looked at me, she says, I like your tie. I said, thank you, madam. I said to, she said to me, she says, you know, we go, she says, I go to a little church. And she says, she says, you're here. She says, you're Christian. I said, sure. I said, I'm a minister. I said, I, you know, I don't talk much about it, but I'm a minister. I came from Quebec. I said, and we're here to have some services. She says, what kind of services? I said, oh, we're going to have some services. We pray for the sick and stuff. She says, you pray for the sick? I said, yes. Yeah. She says, you know what? She says, our church have prayer for the sick every Wednesday. She said, but nobody gets, gets healed. <laughs> she said, nobody never gets healed. <laughs> What a sad thing. A <laughs> restaurant is open, but nobody gets fed. <laughs> Close the thing. Close it down. <laughs> oh, praise the name of the Lord, and he wonderful. Our oh, God is God. <laughs> and you know what? God is going to close a lot of them things down. <laughs> In his time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <sir>. All right. <laughs> Just like you eat, you drink, yeah. you walk, yes. you drive your car, uh -huh. yes. you speak. Sister, could you speak? Of course, yes. You sure you can speak? Yes. No, you, you know you can speak. I can speak. Are you sure you can speak? Yes. How do you know you can speak? Because I can speak. Ah, that's it. <laughs> You could speak. You believe you could speak. Hear what Brother God says. Or anything else. It's just that simple. I hear what he says now. No problem. But when you go to thinking, oh, can I do it? Can I do it? No, that's the devil. Brother Ezekiel, could you really do it? Could you do it? <laughs> that old liar. <clears throat> But when you go to thinking, can I do it? Can I do it? See, then you are going plumb away from the main thing. Amen. You've got to come back here. Amen. To a simple child like faith, just to believe God and say, God promised it. My possession. <laughs> Christ died for it. And it is mine. Don't say that. Don't, 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 please, don't, don't, don't say that. It's yours. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> you don't have much faith. You, you pray you don't have much faith. You don't, please, don't do that. Because if you continue like this with a simple child, I believe in the Lord, that faith will delete, will de will de every devil from hell. Yes. A strong devil. Amen. Amen. The stronger the devil, the stronger the faith will defeat. Amen. Amen. With faith, there's no such a thing as a devil that is too strong. Yeah. Every devil that ever burns, the yeah. faith of God binds him. Yes. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 You, you go doubting and see what happened. Like one guy ran into a house to cast a devil out of a man that was demon possessed. You know what happened? The demon possessed stood up to the man and said, You come to cast me out? He opened the window, grabbed the preacher, and threw him out of the window. <laughs> he said, I cast you out. <laughs> yeah, it happened in the place called Bugmaratris in Trinidad. <laughs> Anyone the world, our God is God. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now. Whoa. I haven't gotten halfway through my message yet. Simple faith. Huh? Now, when you leave, you don't just take this and say, praise God, we've got a good service. You go before God in prayer. Asking Him to give it to you. Now here's what Brother Branham tells you. And I'm going to read it for you so that you will see it's 100% with the message. Okay. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. All right, boy, we're having a good time, aren't we? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the last couple of months, the Lord has helped me to climb into some of the greatest revelations of my life. Yeah. And what amazes me is to see, Brother and how simple these things are. Now, let's read for you a nice one here. Yeah. It's from the Message Communion, and this will criticize what we've been saying. Yeah. Brother Bannon is here. But 
to what we come into communion is for each of us as individuals to commune with Christ. Amen. That is communion. Then communion, communion is not altogether one doing the talking. Amen. Us doing all the talking. Mm -hmm. That's why when you sang that song, they did wait upon the Lord. Amen. See, and to wait on your knees for an answer to prayer. I was in the back and it says, Brother Ram was led of the Lord to lead that song. Amen. Here, hear what Brother Branham says. Communion is not altogether one doing the talking us doing all the talking, but waiting and seeing what he says back to us. Now, this statement is misunderstood too. When God answers, it's misunderstood. Many, many believers of this message do not know how God answers. He answers. But how? I don't blame you. Because if I was sitting in your place and I didn't know, I want to know. Yeah, yeah. Amen. that's right. Amen. Here, let's go on. So, us doing all the talking, we get there and we talk. Yep, 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 bop, 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 bop. Lord, 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 I need this, Lord, I need this, Lord, I need this. Help me, Lord, help me, Lord, this, 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 this. Get up and walk away. Yeah. Did God hear your prayer? I pray that I, I believe he hit my prayer, you know. He's a God that hears prayer. Uh, you know, I, 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 I believe it. What kind of a faith is that? <laughs> Gone are the days when I would talk to my God like that. Gone are those days. Never to come back again. <laughs> bye bye. Au revoir. <laughs> Answering days I hear now. <laughs> Let's go on. Amen. I'll tell you the honest truth. Many people don't even know these things exist. Yes. And I hate to say this. Many, many preachers don't know. Amen. And many, many of the believers around this message don't even know these things. Yes. That's true. They're too caught up in all kinds of doctrines yes. and things and yes. theories and yes. explanations. And, oh, God help people. And they've gone away from the simplicity of faith, which is the foundation. Right. Let's go on. Now, he says, now, this is where many times that we make our great mistakes. He didn't say mistake, singular. He didn't just say a mistake. It's a great mistakes. Is we making great mistakes. Is we do all the talking and don't wait and give him a chance to answer back. Stop making these great mistakes. God, he that cometh unto God must believe Amen. that he is a reward of them that gen diligently seek him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 He answers back. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. I agree. Here, let's go on. We do all the talking and don't wait and give him a chance to answer back. We go sometimes and say, Lord, I would that you would do so and so and so and so and so. Amen. And get up and leave. Now that really isn't communion. Amen. That's going and asking a favor. Amen. Like you ask a favor and you don't know if you're going to get your favor or not. Amen. Well Lord I want this. Thank you Jesus. I walk away. Amen. It's like somebody come and knock on your door. They have a letter or something for you. And maybe a parcel or something. They look in the house and nobody is there. They leave a little note and they leave and go away. There's no answer. Maybe you could be on vacation. Maybe you could be what? All right, let's go on. But Abraham says, <clears throat> we go sometimes and say, Lord, I would that you do so and so and so and so and so. Amen. And get up and leave. Now, that really isn't communion. Amen. That's going and asking a favor. But when you stay long enough until he answers back, Amen. that's when you communion. You're getting communion. Amen. Communion with the Lord. All right. Now, when he answers back, because he promised to answer. Yeah, yes. Yeah. When he answers back, the important thing is, how do we recognize his answer? Because God has a way that he answers back. Yeah. Are you ready? Amen. 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 All right. Now, I'm going to read it for you, so that when you go, you can go and pray.
Let's see how he answers back. Are you ready? Amen. Message of grace. I want to read this for you. Uh, and we read in the scripture that thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's a key right there in the Bible. Right? And it is also written that wherever two or three are assembled together, they will be in their midst. So you hear this morning in the form of the Holy Spirit and know every desire that's on the people's heart. Amen. I pray thee, Father God, that you will speak back to them Amen. and say, it is finished. Yes, Your request has been answered. Amen. Amen. And I am sending you the assurance Amen. this day. Amen. Listen to this. Now. Oh, now. oh, church. Don't now. miss this. Amen. I am sending you the assurance this day yes. that all that you have asked for has been granted. Amen. That assurance is so important. Yes. Amen. 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 That assurance, that's what I look to the Lord for when I'm praying. Yeah. Because when I get the assurance in my heart that my God has answered my prayer, and I could look at any man. Yeah. Let them step them down. They could doubt. They could do whatever they want. Yeah. I got an answer. Yeah. I got the assurance in my soul. Yeah. Just as I know I could walk. Just as I know I could talk. Yeah. That is just naturally. It's something that comes from God. It is just the same as you speak. Just the same as you know in your heart. I got my answer from Almighty God. Yeah. Then all hell can stop that. Yeah. Let yeah. them try. Yeah. Try. Now, when you pray and you're asking God for the assurance, look, better ram. I'm in trouble tonight. I don't want to hold you on too late. But this, there's so much, so much here. A couple of years ago, when Brother Joseph had the first cast of the vision in Kentucky, and after the meeting, Brother David Branham arranged a meeting. This is the first time I saw this in action of getting an answer like this. I'll tell you how it started. This started about almost 30 years back. It's probably about 28 years ago. And David Branham had it in his basement, and he invited in that family. He invited Sister Sharon Johnson. He invited Brother Billy Paul and his wife, Sister Lois. He invited myself and Liz, my wife. So we all went there. But too bad she couldn't come with me on this trip. So we went there in the basement of David. So when we were there, you know, Sister Sharon, she's a great singer, and the Knapp family is great singers and stuff. So Sister Sharon told Brother Billy Paul and I that the doctor had diagnosed her with a tumor in the brain. So I know that Brother Branham says that Brother Billy Paul is a gift of healing. Amen. So I thought, well, Brother Billy Paul would go forward and pray with her. So I was sitting right there, and Brother Billy was sitting right near me and Sister Lois on the other side, and Liz was sitting right over here. So Brother Billy Paul looked at me, and he said to me, he says, Go pray for her. Amen. Now, Brother Billy is like a dad to me. I respect him as a dad. We've been on the fields together. We've been in Europe together, in Germany. We've been on different conventions together. You, Some of you have been there with Brother Billy Paul and I in Macon and in different places and praying for hundreds of sick people and different things like this. Well, and Brother Billy, during those times, he would always hold me a little close to him. He said, I want you to stand near me. He says, when I'm praying for the sick so I get there, not because I made the decision, because Billy Paul, Billy, Brother Billy Paul wanted me there. So anyway, he laid one hand on my shoulder and the other one on the sick, and we would pray together. Anyway, he told me, he said, you go pray for her. Amen. So I went up now, and I prayed for Sister Sharon. And when I finished praying for her, I came back. He said, God heard your prayer. Amen. He said, she's healed. Amen. He said, God heard her. She's healed. Amen. It clicked something in my mind. And that cancer literally disappeared from Sister Sharon Johnson. You can call her today and talk to her. She's still alive. Amen. That's been about 28 years ago. You can, you can call and talk to her. Hallelujah. See? Amen. Now, now, it made me realize. What are we praying for? Why does God, why is prayer so important? Is it just for you to go and pray? No, some people fall on their knees and they pray, 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 just to pray. 
And then they get up and say, well, I pray. They feel good because they pray. What makes me feel good is not because I pray. It's where I answer. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I love this, brother. Stuff These are things that should be emphasized now. It's the areas that the Holy Spirit wants to bring the church into. Amen. Too long have we wasted our time in these Amen. wilderness places Amen. and haven't been making the progress we should. With. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's true. And playing around a little tidbit yeah. and going in the wilderness. Yeah. And like, how many years are you going to be confessing the same thing? I can't pray. I can't pray. I can't pray. 30 years away we were saying that. 30 years away we were saying that. Stop! Amen. 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 Claim the victory now. Yes. Amen. God is here to give you the faith. Yes. That's right. That's right. Amen. Look. Did he promise? That whatever we ask in his name, he'll give it to us. Yes. Then Jesus said that. How many times did Jesus say that? He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I grant it. Yes. How many times did he say that in the Bible? Amen. Did we believe him or don't we believe him? Amen. Was he a liar? Did he say something wrong? No. No. Yeah, here's what the says. Oh, God, help us. Investments. He's praying again. He said, most eternal, most gracious, eternal Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who raised him up on the third day after his crucifixion for our justification, has presented him to us in the form of the Holy Ghost that now comes, blessing our, our hearts and ministering to us the things that we have need of in this life's journey. Realizing and seeing these hands go up, Lord, there is a great need among us this morning, a great need. Yes. Amen. 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 Now. What is the great need? And I pray God that you will not let one of these people go out of here without having this assurance. Amen. That their sins are under the blood. Yes. And they have been born again Amen. and sealed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Ghost. Granted yes. Father. Amen. Listen, all these great things that hinder in you. Because you're thinking I can't. I'm this, I'm that, I'm too weak. It's the hindrances that keeping you far from it. Stop. Stop it. I'm tired. Oh, Brother Ferguson, I'm so tired. <laughs> you know what? Like I told you all last night, Brother Branham said he preached to some of the most tired congregations. Amen. People that are so tired. I've seen people in the meetings that are preaching to, they're so tired, the devil put them to sleep yeah. because you don't want them to hear a word. Amen. <laughs> it's like Jonah went into the bay, to the bay, in the bottom of the bay, the boat, when the waves was tossing back and forth and he was asleep. They got down there and they said, what means thou, old sleeper? <laughs> Get up. Cry to your God. We're in trouble. Amen. Let every man pray to her. Whatever God they believe in, we're in trouble. The boat is sinking. Yes. Amen. <coughs> Listen, church. The boat is sinking again. Yes. Amen. Look at all those religions. All of them is sinking. Amen. Where is this God? Where is the God of the prophets? Amen. Amen. Where is the God of answer prayer? Yes. Little tick, little tick, tick, tick bits and all kind of explanation and theory and explanation and explanation. Stop! We've had enough. Amen. Enough is enough. Yes. Amen. 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 A dead God should be buried. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Is he asleep? He can't hear. Did he go for a walk? Is he on vacation? <laughs> Is he in a grave somewhere? Is he on a planet or a star? What's happening to us? We're in need, Lord. The boat is sinking. Where are you? What the disciple says, Care us not now that we perish. He got up and put his foot on this thing. He said, Please be still. That's our God. They're coming to the meeting. Tired. 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 You're very tired. 
You're so tired, you can't pray. You're tired, you're tired, you're so... The Bible man goes, the old brother man says, he will tell you that you're so tired and he will take you to hell with your tiredness. Amen. That's what the prophet said. Amen. 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 You want to go on the ride with the devil for tiredness? No. <laughs> you're tired. You're tired. Oh, you're tired. You're tired. You're tired. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm tired. I'm tired. How many times I've told the devil and the Lord, I said, Father, take the tiredness away. Yes, Lord. And I said, Satan, you don't, you bundle what you're bringing in me. <laughs> I don't have to carry it. <laughs> I, take it I, I, I take it back. <laughs> Boy, he takes it back. <laughs> and then, then I have time to praise the Lord. I have time to pray. I have time to get things done. A tired man, what can he do? He heads for one place, the bed. And when he gets up, he's still tired. And when he, he goes back to the bed, and when he gets up again, he's tired. I got to stop. <laughs> Yeah. It says here, <laughs> but the man is praying. <laughs> it says, he said, realizing and seeing these hands go up, Lord, there's a great need among us this morning. And I pray, God, you will not let one of these people go out of here without having this assurance. That their sins are under the blood. They have been born again, sealed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Ghost, granted Father. He answers back. Amen. When he answers back, he gives you the substance. Amen. It's like when he tells Peter, Peter said, bid me that I come on the water. He said, come. Yes. come. Peter stepped out of the water and Peter had that assurance. Yes. He had that substance. He began to walk. Amen. And then the waves, he got scared. He got his eyes off of Jesus on the waves now. He got scared. And when he got scared, he lost the assurance. He lost that substance. And down he went. You see, when God... Let me, go, let me just say this to you. I'm going to finish I'm going to finish now. I won't keep you too long. Let's say I'm asking God for this book. Yes, I fall on my knees and I'm asking him for this book. Yes, really, what concerns me the most in my prayer life is not the book. Yeah. But it's the answer from God that he will give me the book. Yes, yes. That's what Mary, Mary understood that. Yes. Was it Mary or Martha that went out to meet him? It was Mary. Yes. That's correct. And when, when Mary went out to meet him at the tomb of Lazarus, she was trying, but Abraham said, to get him to say, just to say, he will do it. Yeah. Not that he'll do it, but just to say he'll do it. Yeah. You see, she was waiting an answer. Yeah. And when he said to her, thy brother shall rise again, yeah. she knew right there, she's getting the answer. Yeah. She held on until she gets the answer. Yeah. Brother Abraham says, when Jacob stood with the angel of the Lord and wrestled all night, he wrestled for one thing. The prop, but Brother Adam said in the desperation message, he was wrestling to get the assurance. And once he had the assurance that God was going to be with him when he faced, when he faced Esau, then he didn't need no other help. All he needed was the assurance, the answer. When Moses met the Lord and he got the assurance from God, you go down to Pharaoh, I will be with you. What Moses needed, that assurance that God will be with him, then he could face any Pharaoh. Now, yes. if I'm praying, yeah. and I'm saying, Lord, I need the Bible. Now, listen to this, church. I'm going to finish, please. But don't please let the Lord, I pray the Holy Ghost, wake you up and put it in your heart tonight. Amen. It's so important. Amen. Many, many Christians spend their entire life. I don't even know if they get an answer to a prayer. What a miserable condition. Yeah. Amen. Okay. I'm asking God for this Bible. Lord, I want the Bible. No, my object is the Bible. But deep in my heart, I want an answer from him. Amen. Now, when he gives me the assurance yes. that I have the Bible, that's all I need. Yes. Even I don't see the Bible, he can take care of that. Yes. I have the assurance. Amen. I have the assurance in my heart. Yes. Like Jacob. When Jacob passed with the angel of the Lord all night, he got the assurance. Yes. And when he got the assurance, he was able to face any Esau. Yes. 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 Amen. Yes, sir. I believe, I believe. The prophet of God says that 
assurance yes. Yes. belongs to Christian yes. and only Christian. Yes. Yes. Nobody else had it. Amen. Let them talk. They don't have it. He said it belongs only to the Christian. We have something that nobody else has. Amen. Father, in my name. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you, no, I'm going to finish now. Amen. If you see it tonight, Amen. raise your hand and give him praise. Amen. But let me say this to you. And I'm talking to you now in the name of the Lord. We're going before the Lord, my brothers, my sisters. And you're going to ask him, if you've never done it in your life, don't leave the meeting and forget it. Don't let the devil steal these things from you. You're going before the Lord and you say, Father, I need that inner assurance. The assurance that my prayer has been answered. Let's leave our hands now as I'm going to be praying for everyone. Father in heaven, here is this little assembly here tonight, Lord God of heaven. And Father, we lift our hands to you. Knowing, Lord God of heaven, that we cannot, we cannot manufacture these things. It's not just a feelings, Lord. It is an assurance coming from you. It is something that you put into the heart. It is a faith coming in our hearts. It is a substance coming in our hearts. It is an answer from you that what we have asked for has been granted. I know God of heaven is that simple faith. We believe you. We love you. We worship you. We praise you. How precious, how loving you are. We thank you with all our hearts. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We love you. You're so precious to all of us. Oh, God of heaven, we're coming to you. You're our God. We're your people. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful, wonderful Lord. Amen. And amen. And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, precious, precious Jesus. Wonderful, wonderful Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Amen. And amen. We're going to stop being a shallow-minded Christian, doubting, doubting, doubting. And we are coming now to that assurance like what Jacob had when he met the Lord. He wrestled until he got that. And tonight he's here to give it to you. He's giving it to you. It's all yours. It's all yours. In Jesus' name. It's simple, 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 childlike faith. And the Holy Spirit here. And he gives it to you. He gives it to you. Now I'll say this to you, and I can say this in the name of the Lord. With the anointing that is present right now, anything is possible. Anything is possible. All things are possible. Do you believe that all things are possible? All things are possible to them that believe. Amen. That's the message. That's the word of God. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the anointing that's present here. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Lord. Wonderful, wonderful is he. Amen? Amen. Amen. And sometimes in the meetings, I'll pray for someone. I didn't get the assurance. I didn't get the answer from God. Amen. One brother came to me, Brother Shield Valley. He said, Brother Ferguson, what about my wife? Prayed for her. I said, she'll come. 
she came, she got baptized. Another brother came, she came, she got, he got baptized. Another brother came to me, he said to me, he said, Brother Ferguson, what about my wife? I said, Brother, I've prayed for her, I can't get an assurance, I can't get an answer from God. He said, well, go back. I said, brother, pray for me. I can't get the burden. I said, I just can't. I go before the Lord. I said, I'll be honest with you. I'm my prayer is not getting through to God for her. I prayed and prayed. She, I said, no, brother, I can't. She's never come to the Lord. And then one day I was traveling. We were in a little car. And there was a little sister. She's gone on to meet the Lord. Named Sister Daniel Govermore. And I was sitting. And brother, 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 uh, Gilles was driving the car. I was sitting there. And the sisters, two sisters was in the back. And while I was there, I fell in a trance in the car. And two beans were talking. And one of the beans says, they were talking about this man's wife. And one of the beans says, said in the, in the trance, they said, but you know, God, because she was, she could have taken him to the courts and really cleaned Brother Frank out. And says, well, God spoke to his heart and she didn't do it. And then the other bean said to the other one, but would she ever give her heart to the Lord? And when the, when the question was asked, Sister Daniel Governor in the back, she says, Brother Ferguson. And she hit me on her shoulder like this. She was just an excited sister like that. And when she did, it snapped me out of it. Before I could find, I could find, I could hear. And when I told her, what, when I tell her what was happening, she felt so guilty. But you know, sometimes she would be like that. And then she's one of those sisters, she just get excited, you know. And she's talking, she said, and she tapped me on the back. And when she did, it snapped me out of it. Church, we have entered into a realm. As the prophet of God says, Amen. Yeah, the spirit of God is moving in ways. Amen. That he always moved. But listen, it's so secluded. It, it's nothing something that we go out there and brag and boast about. That's right. It's Amen. all in simplicity. Amen. But we know a God. Amen. We know a God Amen. that hears and answers for us. A living reality. Amen. 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 God bless all of you. Amen. I think I'll have to stop here. Tomorrow, the Lord willing, I have something else in my heart. I want to share something with you, and I'm almost sure that some of what I want to share with you tomorrow will be again another subject that you've probably never heard of. So the Lord willing, we're going to go deep into something tomorrow, and I know it will be a blessing for you. But in the meantime, bring that body of feelings under subjection. Amen. You were created to master all things. Amen. That's what God created you for. Amen. You have the power. You don't have to be afraid. When you get that assurance in your heart, there's nothing to fear. I could share testimony after testimony with you. Here am I crossing the Congo River. I have an assurance in my heart. I got to go to Brazzaville and come back. I knew the Lord was sending me. Here's a boat came over. There's a guy on a little bed, a little um, stretcher. The military attacked that morning. The place is in a state of war. They killed three men. And this guy had a bullet wound over here. A bullet torn here past his eye here. And he tore his eye out. The blood was pouring from his hand. They took him off the boat. They mopped up the blood. And I stepped in to cross over. All the brothers who were with me said, Brother Ferguson, don't go. Don't go, Brother Ferguson. It's too dangerous. It's because you're a foreigner, Brother Ferguson. Please, do not go. They said, call Brother Joseph and tell him not to go. I said, I'm not going to call Brother Joseph and tell him nothing. I told him I'm going to go, and I'm going to go. Amen. <coughs> they said, but Brother Ferguson, you hear these bombs that's fighting over there. I said, I don't care about the fighting and the bombs. I got to go. Amen. They mopped up the blood. I asked one brother, I said, where do you go with me? He said, mopping up the blood. He said, no, 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 I ain't going to go there. I stepped into the boat, and that boat took me over. Amen. When I got over there, I had to meet him to straighten up the problems with the distribution of the message and stuff. Then my problem is, I'm really we're having the meetings to get to the hotel. I can't get no taxi to drive me. Whoa. Finally, one taxi man said, I'll take you. On our way going through my sister, we crossed the, the enemy lines where the government forces and the rebels were fighting. You hear those machine guns burning. <laughs> the taxi driver turned around and he looked at me. He said, you understand now why nobody want to bring you here? <laughs> the next day, <coughs> I have to get out of the country. The brothers, I tell the brothers, please, please, brother, don't worry about the war. Come get me. I got to go. 
They said, all right, we're trying to get a car. They got a taxi. They got, I, I, I mean, they brought us a car. Finally, they drove to pick me up at the hotel. I'm coming back. I got to get to this place called the beach. I have to get on that, that boat and leave. I have to. The next day is a general strike. The country is in a state of war. Bombs falling and different things. A Catholic church was bombed. 150 people died, which I told you about. Yeah. I'm leaving now. When I go to cramps in my tummy, excuse me. Tell you the truth. Oh my goodness, my tummy. Oh, I'm so sick. Oh my. I gotta go to the washroom. Go to the washroom. Come back out. They said, Brother Ferguson, we gotta get you to the beach. We got to get you there. You got to get out of this place. If you get out, if you don't get out of this place, seven days, this place is gonna be paralyzed. The borders are gonna be shot. Nobody can enter, nobody can leave. You and you've been uh, it's very dangerous for you. We gotta get you out. I'm telling you, oh brother, I, said, I gotta go to the washroom and get old oh, help me. I said, brother Ferguson, can't you hold it? It's not the I can't. We gotta, gotta go. I went and go. I'll show you the hand of the Lord. I ran over that washroom now, get back into the car. I'd rather get, oh Lord, I'm so sick. I said, please, brother, I gotta go. He said, brother Ferguson, you gotta stop this. We gotta do something. I said, brother, I gotta go to the washroom. What can I do? I told the washroom I go. You know what? All of that happened for one purpose. Yeah. Amen. When I get to the beach, if I had gotten there in time, there was a shootout between two groups of police, the soldiers and the police, and four police officers got killed, and I would have right been right there in the fire. I would have been right there in the fire, and God let the devil attack my physical body. Afterwards, everything was fine with me in order to stop. Oh, God is God. Jesus Christ to do for you. What do you want him to do for you? Tell him what you want. The anointing is here. The presence of the Holy Ghost is here. Tell him whatever you want. Claim it in Jesus' name. Trudy, you can believe God for your son right now that God will grant it to you. Believe the Lord. Believe him. Believe him. I'm sorry I kept you all this way. But God bless you all. Turn around, we gotta stop. We got to dismiss them now. I know the anointing is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. Alright. Could we sing that little chorus? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. We'll sing that and then we'll try to finish up. Is that alright, Brother Ram? Not gonna keep them long. We'll sing that. Tell it to Jesus. Let's sing that little chorus. Brother Ram, you wanna come and help me? And we'll sing it. And then tomorrow, we're going to try our best. You know, we were trying our best to cut that song service down. And then I know that with the anointing at this, and with the presence of the Lord, and wanted to share these things with you, you know, I'm sure it will be a blessing. When you go home tonight, don't rush and go to in, into your bed. Take a little bit of time and tell it to Jesus. Amen. Talk to Jesus. Tell him. Tell it to him. He's a friend. That is, when you're in need, he's there to help you. Amen. All right, we'll sing that little chorus. Tell it to Jesus, amen. amen. You know that that song, don't you? Yeah. Sure, brother Ram, you know it. Let's <coughs> sing it, brother Ram. Tell it to Jesus. You know it, buddy. Ezekiel. Can you help us with that, buddy? Ezekiel can help us. This time, buddy. Can you come right here, my brother? Come help me here. You're my friend. Tell it. Let's help it with the friend I swear no.
time, Brother Ram, we don't want to hold them long. We don't want, we have said enough, so please, we're just going to dismiss it, Brother Ram. I'll just let you do it. Exactly. And then we will dismiss you all in a word of prayer right away. Amen? Amen. Don't forget the meeting tomorrow at 10.30. God bless you all. Amen. And if Brother Ram have anything else, he wants to add quickly. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. What a blessing. Amen. 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 He's still God. Amen. 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 So, Brother Samuel, can you come just quickly and pray for the food and dismiss us? Okay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Lord, you are just so awesome. We bow in your royal presence to worship you, to honor you, and to reverence you. You've been such a good God to us, Lord. Now we want to spend our entire life to serve you and to love you and to worship you. Thank you for the ministry of your words. You declare by your holiness that heavens and the earth shall pass. But your word shall stand forever. Amen. And tonight we stand upon the authority of your words, Lord. Even though the heavens and the earth shall pass, your word shall stand. And we worship you. We honor you. We reverence you. We glorify you. We lift high the banner of Jesus tonight. And praise that royal name, the sweetest name, and mortal lips. It's the name Jesus tonight. Bless every heart. Bless every life tonight. As we come in our life into your loving care. And surrender our all to you. Yes, Lord. Thank you again for your pastor, Lord. For Brother Ferguson. Continue to anoint him. And use him for your honor and for your glory. Lord, bless the food that you have provided for us, Lord. And that we come to the end of our service today, Lord. Take us safely home and bring us tomorrow so we can continue to worship you, honor you, and reverence you, and glorify you. Because you are deeply worthy to be worshipped, to be honored, and be praised. Thank you again, Father, in the lovely and precious name, the name Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, Amen. praise the Lord. Brother Anton stands here. There is a need. Okay. He spoke to me about it. Amen. You did a miracle for him earlier this year. You did a great miracle. Amen. This man should not be alive, according to the medical record. But he stands here tonight as a testimony Amen. of the supernatural things of God. Now he's come to me with another little request. Yes. Now, my God, you are God. Yes. And you hear and answer our prayer. Yes. And now just a simple prayer with the faith behind it. Brother Anton, in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. receive your request. Yes. Be it unto you as you believe it now. Yes. Father, he believes you. Yes. He loves you. Yes. He trusts you. Yes. Now you make the way. Yes. He wants the job. Brother Anton, receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now, the job is on the way. The prayer is answered. When you get the job, let me know. God bless you. Keep it. Keep it. Amen. All right. So we're finished here. God bless every one of you. So brother Ram, we we'll come back for tomorrow. So. Amen. The Lord bless you all. Yes. Tell it to Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you want, um, in fact, will you have your seat? Uh, we're going to go to the table. We're going to go. We're going to take from the front row, so would there be no congestion? Yeah. You understand? And Sister Mary, would you just um, play "Amazing Grace" for us? So my boy and somebody will help. And um, we thank Watch everyone for bringing the little dishes for us. I'm going to leave it back here. So we want to make sure Who do you want me to that it we one? eat whatever I'm all is serving for us. Is that okay, everybody? So we just go from the first row okay, quietly, I'll tell and him. then. I'm giving it it's all for you to take anyhow. Amen. Whatever we mean, you can have it home anyhow also. Tomorrow we'll start promptly at 10, 10 30, I think it is. And we are trusting God again to to be with us again. Amen. Praise the Lord while we you go and get your meal. And we sing Amazing Grace. How sweet that sound. Oh, 
me. We are this way, son. You can go from the front seat. Then grace to the house of me. I'll see you before you
to prepare us a dwelling there in the street by and by we shall meet on that view for sure in the street by and by we shall on that view I'll sing on that I'll give you a part the show. Now mellow the song of the blessed And the spirit shall I'm sorry. stop I don't, I don't like Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by Shall meet on that view, we for show. The by and by. On that view, you are bountiful, Father. We will offer a tribute of praise. For the glorious gift of His love And the blessing that have no day In the space by and by You shall be on that deep deeper shore Sing on that hill The melodious song of the bear And the spiritual song Don't know much Not a sign for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall be on that beautiful shore amen praise the lord amen lord her life but Father, you promised, you said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Oh God of heaven, let this word be made tonight for her. Oh God, you will break through all the darkness, all the clouds, all the shadows, everything. Let the light of the presence and power of Almighty God penetrate into her soul now. Let the anointing of the Spirit of Christ be upon her now, Lord. Let it stimulate your faith. Let you cannot hold it no way and block it, because the power and the presence of God is against you. No Father, bless her. Let it be that her life will be a blessing. Oh God, please stop the name of the Lord. I believe he's answering the prayer for you now. Lord God of heaven now, and I can see and see in my spirit the light of the Holy Spirit shining in me, shining in me. Father, I will glorify you tonight. What it means. Oh, God bless you. Oh, the anointing come upon you, Sibyl. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a power. What an anointing. What a presence of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, I bless you. What a power. What an anointing. What a presence of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we rejoice together in you. We thank you. I thank you with all my heart, with all my soul for my sister. I glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. That's wonderful, Sybil. It's wonderful. That light to just find right upon you. You know, God bless you. What a blessing. Amen. God bless you. Well, God bless you. Good to meet you all. I'm so happy. Ah, he's what's happening. Feeling the 
Christ spirit. I wish that the believers that are around the world in the match, all of them can see it. I'd like to see all Christians all right? Because then we live in that happy. Thank you. 